somebody put your hands together and give them a cup offering this morning hallelujah who's excited about it sunday three of us are good hallelujah lift up your hands with me father we thank you for your goodness we thank you that we can come alive in your river the river of life that give us hope healing all that we need is found in your river god and this morning we choose to worship you this morning, we choose to lift up our voices to you, God. This morning, we say to you, let your kingdom come. Say with me, let your kingdom come. Let your, kingdom come. Let your, will, be your will be done in my life, in this place, as it is in heaven. 
Lord, have your way this morning, God. We give you permission to have your way in our lives this morning, God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, God, that we're coming alive, God. We thank you, God, that your spirit is moving. We thank you for angels on assignment, ascending and descending in this place uh, with glory, with healing, with power, God. We give you glory this morning in Jesus' mighty name, God. God's people stand. Give a high five to somebody this morning. Come on. Hallelujah.
the goodness of God. Thank you for your goodness, Father. Thank you, Jesus, you are faithful. Miracle worker, promise keeper. 
Way maker, way maker. 
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, and that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You're a way when it looks like there is no hope. You are the way maker, Lord. You are the way maker, Lord Jesus. You are the miracle worker, Lord. We stand on you, Lord Jesus. We stand on you, Lord. This is miracle ground. Oh, we worship, we worship. In this place, just lift up your hands to Him. The sound of our voice, those that are worshiping with us through live stream this morning, just lift up your hands to the Lord. Would like us to go back to this song in just a moment. But Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. To feed, to guide, to shield me, I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside still waters in, re in restful places. He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in paths of righteousness. I brightness in right standing with Him. Not for my earning it, but for His name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley, the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. Surely, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord in His presence shall be my dwelling place. Surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord in His presence shall be my dwelling place. Just close your eyes and lift up your hands. The song says, You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. That is who you are. We have a reason to worship. 
Even though our walk might be dark at this moment, even though you might be going through a difficult time, even though you might be climbing a mountain that you don't see the top, even though you're crossing a valley that seems so far in the, in the desert that of the, the, the heat of the desert is coming upon you, let me tell you this morning, He is the way maker. Even though you don't see it, He is working on your behalf. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I give you permission to minister to me. The impossible belongs to you. And this morning I choose to do what is possible. It is to worship you. It is to declare into the atmosphere before my enemies this morning. Before my enemies this morning, I say, you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the light in the darkness. And I will worship you with all that I have. I will worship you with all that I have. Because you're making a way where there is no way. And surely, only goodness and mercy will follow me. Will un unfeel love. Your unfeel love shall follow me all the days of my life. Into the length of all my days. The house of the Lord. In His presence, God. Your house, your presence shall be my dwelling place. There's something that happens when we come together. There's something that happens when we, that when we come together. There's something that happens when we're together in unity. There's something that happens when we come in worship. Something is shifted in the atmosphere. That does not happen when you're alone. Something even now. Something faith is arising even now in your heart. So I want you to forget about who's beside you and in front of you or behind you. I want you to forget what happened this week or even this morning. I want you to forget about your needs or your desires this morning. And this morning, would you just zoom in to the presence of God? For you are here in this place, God. Working miracles in our lives, Lord. Come on, lift up your hands and let's sing. You are here. You are here, yes you are. Jesus, come and have your way. Come and have your way this morning, God. You are worthy to receive the glory. There is none like you. Let the Spirit of God come and touch you. He loves you unconditionally. Sing it from the top this morning. Sing it to Him from your heart. Yes, God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you that even now miracles are happening in this place. We thank you, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come on, just worship Him. Come on, sing it to Him. Come on, everybody just... Come on, lift up your voice to Him and sing it. Yes, God. Just sing it to Him. He already knows your need this morning. You are here working in this place. Yes, God. I worship you. Just worship you. I worship you. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. 
my God, that is who you are. You are here. Yes, so oh God. Standing in the midst. Worship him. Worship Come on, church, worship him. Oh, lift him up in this place. Open your heart to him and say, You are working in this place. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who, oh, that's who you are, that's who you are, yes, he's making a way where there is no way, come on, you just declared that this morning, that is who you are, oh, that's who you are, we make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, oh, that's who you are, who you are, that is who you are, who you are, yes, oh God. We make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You, we make Come on, sing it out, church. Doesn't matter how you feel. What matters that it's promises. A yes and amen. It's promises. It's word over you. His promise over you he is greater than anything in your life. His, he is greater than anything. Come on, declare it. Declare it and something will shift. Something will break. Something will break. Declare this morning you are. Yes, 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 you are. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that's who you are, me. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even though I don't see you, I work in. Even though you don't see it, He's still working. He's still making your way. You're not moved by your feelings. You're moved by faith this morning. For He is here. He is here. His presence is here this morning. 
His presence is here this morning. Just believe, he says in his word. If you believe, if you only believe, he is here. He is the miracle worker. He is the promise keeper. He is. Would you just put your hand in the person behind or in front or next to you? Let's believe together for one another. Let's just pray for one another for a moment. Father, we thank you that you are in this place, God. We thank you that you're working all things together for our good. We thank you, Lord, that you're working miracles. Lord, we thank you that you're working miracles in our lives, in the lives of those in this place. We come against disbelief, God, and we declare the spirit of faith to arise in this place. I decree over those that are worshiping through live stream this morning, I decree and declare over your life, I decree the goodness of God, the glory of God to come upon you this morning and fill your heart, fill your life, fill you this morning with an everlasting love. His love is sufficient. His glory is enough. His presence is with you. Surely goodness and mercy will follow all the days of my life. And I will dwell in his house. And I will make his presence my dwelling place. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus, that you're making a way where there is no way. You're working miracles. You are working miracles. You're making a way, God. I thank you for miracles. Even now, I thank you that you're breaking off chains. You're breaking off patterns. God, you're breaking off uh, sickness and disease. You're breaking off, oh God. You are healing our hearts emotionally, physically, even this morning, God. I thank you that strength is arising, God. I thank you that we're moved by your presence and not by uh, what we see in the natural, God. I thank you for the supernatural is moving in our midst god i thank you lord for you we are loved unconditionally by you god i thank you that we have been healed in this morning we receive your healing we receive our breakthrough we receive our portion this morning god for you are faithful you are faithful god we worship you god oh we worship you oh you are Holy Spirit, come. Come and have your way, God. Come. Come and have your way this morning, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you that you are the same today, yesterday, and forever, God. You remain the same. Your promises are yes and amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're working in our lives. You're working our children, God. You're working our businesses. You're working our belongings. We thank you that you're working our marriages, God. You're working, oh God. You are a miracle worker. And you are working even behind the scenes when we don't see it. When we don't see it in the natural, God, you are still working, God. And this morning, we trust in you. We trust in you, God. We trust in you, God. We trust in you, God, for you are faithful. You are faithful to accomplish the things that you said you were going to do. And we say, yes, God, you are working in this place. Miracles, signs, wonders of glory, God. Oh, you are here. Your presence, oh God, we make your presence our dwelling place, God. You are working. You are the miracle worker. Jesus, we give you the glory. Jesus, we give you the glory. Jesus, we give you the glory this morning. For you are worthy to receive the glory. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are here. Working miracles. Working miracles, working miracles, I worship you. Miracle work, promise 
stronger. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We oh! make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that's who you are. That's who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, put your hands together and give him a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the miracle worker. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, somebody. He deserves the glory. He deserves our worship. He deserves to be magnified, glorified, lifted up. Jesus is Lord. Come on, somebody. Jesus is Lord. He deserves the glory. He is the miracle worker. Hallelujah. Woo! We magnify your name, God. We magnify the name of Jesus. Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And we choose this morning to confess, to bow down before his name. The name that is above every other name. Woo! Find at least a handful of people. Let them know who you are. Tell them how beautiful they're looking. And just bless somebody this morning. Glory to God. To all of you worshiping with us through live stream or our um, YouTube channel this morning, we bless you and we declare the blessings of God over you from the river to whatever you are. May we be filled with the glory and the power of God this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Goodwill towards man. Hallelujah. Who's excited this morning? Who's excited this morning? Summer is still here. I've been praying for summer, and I'm believing that summer is going to stay for a while. The Bible says, declare a thing and it shall be established. Can I get a witness on that? Can I get two witnesses on that? Come on. Come on. Are you excited? You've been eating some pumpkin pie? My favorite. With lots of whipped cream. Lots of whipped cream. Yes. I know, whipped cream. Linda has some announcements for us this morning. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Pastor Martin. Well, if you came in here this morning discouraged or with a weight or a problem or an issue, or even if you're on the mountaintops, man, after worship, you cannot leave here with doubt that he is the God he says he is. So I am expecting Pastor Joe next week some testimonies in this place. Wow, the power was so awesome. Just believe, even when you walk out here, just believe. Something comes up, say, hey, he's my way maker. He is my promise keeper. He is the light of my darkness.
Because you know, light shines the best where? In the darkness. So anyways, that's not my message. I have to do announcements and offering. Um, so the announcements for today, there is nursery that's available after service. No Sunday school though today, okay? So you can send the children down through the back stairs if they're going down. Uh, Life Cafe, just a reminder that we're open early, so come on in. Uh, I think it starts at 9.30 for a coffee and a muffin. Carolyn spends a lot of time thinking about the elevated snacks that she's going to make for this church. So it's a blessing to her heart when we come and partake of what she's done. So we don't want to rob her of her gift and reward for her service to the church. So forget Tim Hortons, forget Starbucks, come to La Cafe. Life Cafe at the river, okay? Um, so muffins, coffee, all that stuff. Uh, it's a great place to connect before service, and it's a fantastic place to connect with Pastor Joe and Bella, uh, the pastoral team afterwards. They're usually in the foyer. So if you want, you haven't met them or you're new to the church, or you just want to have a chit-chat and, you know, let them know where you're at, it's a fantastic place to come afterwards. As Pastor Joe says, the chicken or whatever's in the oven will wait. You can come and have a coffee afterwards. Reminder that every Wednesday night here in the sanctuary, there is prayer. Um, I don't always get to come out, but the last, time I get to, what, the last time I came out, it was so amazing. I was like, wow, I wish I didn't have to work late on Wednesdays. So come on out. You know, we're supposed to be a, ch a church that prays, and we know that nothing shifts unless we pray. So come on out, spend an hour and a half. It starts at 7 p.m. I believe it's over right at on time at 8.30. It's a great time to just come into agreement and watch God move in a city uh, and in your lives. Uh, a reminder also of our encounter weekend on November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And we have the honor of hosting uh, the prophet Charlie Champ again. And for those of you who know him, amazing man of God, those who don't know him, come on out. And let's hear what he has to say. Uh, we have also um, been asking people to sign up for the 24-7 election, prayer election stuff. And it's online. Uh, you can sign up for 15 minutes. Uh, you will go to www.justicewall.com. And on there, you can pick a time. You can pick two times, three times, four times, once a day, once a week. It doesn't matter. But at least we can say after the election, we did our part. And that's what I think is more powerful. And tell your friends at work. Send out a little blast to your friends at work. Hey, you're always complaining about the government? Here, why don't you sign up 15 minutes, have a little bit of a prayer time, and then maybe we'll actually see a government that will come in that will actually honor our Christian values and uh, the things that we want. Um, huge announcement. The Alpha Series is starting this week on Tuesday night. Uh, it's, a, it's a connect group. So it's not for the people in the church. It's for the people in the church to invite the people who are not in the church to come in and learn about God. It's a really easy way of uh, introducing people to the God that we just sang about, the way maker, right? In a way that's not offensive, in a way that's fun. There's a, um, elevated snacks before, and then there'll be a video, and then there'll be time afterwards for discussion. So fantastic place. There's uh, some cards in the back. I suggest that you pick up a handful, drop it off at, in the office, drop it off maybe to some neighbors, put their name on it, let them know you'd love them to come out. And uh, if you do that, make sure you bring them, or at least show up yourself. You don't want them walking in and going, hey, where's my friend? She told me to come here. So a great way for people to get to know who God is. And uh, we are very blessed and honored that we get to host for Hamilton area. So this is, it's not just for the River Church, it's for the whole of Hamilton, Burlington, Ancaster. Um, we are going to now take up our tithe and offerings, which is another awesome thing that we get to do at church. And uh, I remember Jesus saying, you know, as he sat outside the temple watching people go in and give their tithes, there's lots of rich people that gave, and there was that one little woman that gave just all that she had. And he, she was blessed, Jesus said. So, you know, don't come condemned. I don't have the money. Just come and honor God in whatever you have, little or lots. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that we want your obedience. And so we have a declaration that we declare. And so if you hear something in the declaration that you're looking for, claim it as yours. If you're watching online, don't forget you can give online. Uh, we appreciate that. We love you for it. And so, yes. Can you all stand with me, and we will get the declaration up. Oh, here we go. 
So nice, good voices and believing what we're, what we're reading here. So as we receive today's offering, we are declaring and thanking the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates, and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreasing, blessing and increase, heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, visitation, and divine manifestation, anointing, gifting and calls, positions and promotions, res and resources to go to the nation, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase upon me, so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. There are buckets at the front. Come on up. Good morning. Isn't God good? You know, I've been a Christian. I'm, if I say how many years, you're going to fall off your chair. But it's been 35 years that I've been a Christian. I know I am only 25, but I've been a Christian 35 years. And um, the reason why I say that is because I never, God never ceases to amaze me. All the, all the times, the minutes, the hours spent in worship, he never ceases to amaze me. And I never, ever get tired of worshiping him. Never. Don't ever get tired of worshiping God. Amen. Um, I just wanted to touch base on Alpha just really quickly. I, I know that Linda did a fantastic job. I just wanted to reiterate that in the back, uh, there's a nice little lamp there right in the back. Um, and there's uh, sheets there. And we are looking for three specific uh, tasks to be fulfilled, really. So we're looking for volunteers that will make Alpha Night run a lot smoother. Um, teamwork makes the dream work, right? So um, if you would be so kind to maybe take a look at the, the forms that we have. So I'll tell you what we have really quickly. Um, there is, uh, we need help with uh, snacks um, with the hospitality uh, part. And uh, Mrs. Carolyn Kelsey is in charge of that uh, for Alpha. So if you want to touch base for more information on what that would consist of, uh, as far as you helping, uh, feel free. She's very easy to find. She's got blue hair. Um, so you can touch base with the lady, lady bit with blue hair. And also we need help uh, Sunday. So today, after church, we just need about four to six people uh, that will stay and help put the tables. Uh, we're going to put the tables up here. So it's just round tables and put the chairs around it. That's all it is. And also on Tuesday night after Alpha, it takes about 10 minutes if you can stay behind and help ta uh, tear everything down and kind of re put the, ch the chairs back and the tables back. So the more people we have, the faster it goes. 10, 15 minutes of your time is the commitment that we're looking for. So if you would be so kind to check in the back, that would be 
awesome. Um, and yeah, I think in the invitation cards, like Linda said, um, the invitation cards are there. They're available for you. If you wouldn't mind grabbing a couple, put them in your purse. The lady at Walmart, at the, the cashier, or for me, I'm, we're still kind of new around here. So I'm having to be creative and thinking, who am I going to invite? And also asking the Holy Spirit, how am I going to invite strangers? Um, so, um, but there's, there's always people in our circle that need to know about Jesus. And it doesn't need to be... Um, you don't need to preach at them when you invite them. Say, hey, we have something happening. Uh, you give them the address. You don't even need to say it's at our church, really. You can just say it's at 1221 Wilson Street East. And, uh, you know, it's just if you have questions about your faith or about God, um, you know, this is a place where you can ask all qu the questions you want. There's going to be food, free food, amazing food, and amazing people there. So if you just want to take a couple invitation cards, that would be awesome, because we don't want to show up here on Tuesday night, and it's just us. So <laughs> just a little encouragement. So have a great week, guys, and see you on Tuesday. Come on, somebody. Um, regarding the prayer for the government, uh, I carry a bracelet. It's kind of reddish. And it says Canada 365 and pray. But also on my phone, because I know we have busy lives. Who has a smartphone? Who needs a smartphone? Who wants a smartphone? Oh, oh Rachel, you got a smartphone. So if you have a smartphone, you can put... What I, what I did was uh, on... Because um, the election is on October 21st. So at uh, 1021, so every morning at 1021, my alarm on my phone goes off. And that's a reminder to pray for Canada, to pray for a righteous government. So if you have a smartphone, what a great idea. Yeah, you can do it right now. That's okay. Oh, you won't interrupt me. Put your alarm for, to repeat every day until October 21st. At 1021 in the morning. And when that goes off, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you just break out in a prayer. And if you don't want to, you know, break out loud in a prayer, just pray to yourself. Because people are going to say, what's going on? And you just tell them, I am praying for Canada right now. Come on, somebody. Um, glory to God. Um, isn't God so good? There's a shift that is coming to our nation, and it is time for righteous government to take its place. Amen? Amen? It's okay to talk about, you know, elections and all these things from the platform. It's all right. It's okay. Uh, Ellie has a, a testimony. Bella and Ellie, would you just come? And uh, she's going to share. <laughs> okay, so not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before, uh, I was going to work around 8 o'clock in the morning. I work as a teacher just uh, in Westdale, and uh, the car in front of me stopped abruptly, and fortunately, I have a sensor on my car that has it stopped abruptly. So I stopped in time, but the car behind me didn't, and he slammed into my car. So I got smushed between both vehicles and my neck started to really hurt and I stepped outside and before I could get overwhelmed or afraid, uh, the woman who I crashed or who eventually my car smushed into, uh, she looked at me and she says, you know, unfortunately I've been in this situation many times before and so I know exactly what to do, just follow my lead. So she took me through the whole process and exchanging insurance and driver's license and whatnot. The police showed up. One of the police officers had kind of like a fatherly disposition, so he took me under his wing. And uh, when it was time to figure out what to do with the car, my car was drivable, but Holy Spirit in that moment said, take the tow truck, the insurance company will cover it. You're not really in a place to drive. You have to go downtown. You don't know where you're going. So I was just carried from the very beginning. The tow truck arrived. The, the man who uh, was driving the truck was so kind. He was just this really um, sweet man. And so once I got into the cabin of the tow truck, 
Uh, I called the insurance company, all of this prompted by the Lord, of course, and any question I couldn't answer, he could overhear the conversation, and he was feeding me the answers, the details of what had happened to my car. So I got downtown to the Collision Reporting Center, and um, there was just this grace on me. I was having wonderful conversations with everyone. It was actually um, evolving into the best day that I had had <laughs> in, like, at least a month. There was this sort of lull in my in my faith and so I, but I had you know courage to have these conversations and just bless people everybody at the collision center and, and encourage them even though you know my neck's hurting and this process has just begun so everyone was really helpful it so happened that the insurance company the tow truck driver that took me it was the car repair center that he works for was what my insurance chose for us to take the car to does that make sense so, okay, so I got there, and uh, ag again, another really helpful, kind, funny guy helped me out, so I kind of relaxed a little bit, and then the car rental shop was just around the corner in walking distance, so I walked over, and uh, I met with the guy within moments, and uh, he helped me out, and he took me to the car, and it was this small little hatchback, and God said, ask him for the SUV, because I've always wanted an SUV. <laughs> So I looked at him and I said, do you have SUVs? And he said, sure, I do. So we went and we saw this like Mitsubishi whatever and checked it out. And, uh, and I said, okay, great, let's, I'll take that one. And he says, you know, it's extra and the insurance doesn't cover the difference. I said, oh, that's too bad. He says, you know what, I'll absorb the cost. I want you to have your SUV. <laughs> So I'm waiting in the, uh, in the waiting room for the car to be cleaned, and he comes in five minutes later and he says, you know what, this brand new Nissan Rogue just pulled up and you can have that one if you'd like. So I got my SUV. It gets better. <laughs> so isn't God so good? Yes, he is. And um, so I drove... Uh, I decided to go for a chicken finger dinner or lunch because, you know, it's my day off. Um, and I uh, went to the hospital. I had to wait a couple of hours, but eventually I was cleared for just having muscle strain. So I didn't have a brain. Uh, it wasn't anything too severe. Um, and I didn't even have to go on prescription medication. It was just some Tylenol and a leave. So the next day I took the day off. Um, and as the days evolved, I found out that my car it would cost $15,000 to repair, of course, covered by insurance, but just to give you a sense of sort of the extent of the damages. And, um, and I started physio right away. My insurance company's been wonderful. They, even the police officer was kind of warning me that they're kind of tricky to talk to and they might not really be that, that honest, but I had this wonderful girl help me out, so that was wonderful. Anyway, so I started going to physio, and within a week, he was amazed by the progress. I, was, I went from not being able to move my neck to having full range of motion and graduating from one exercise to the next. And then this past Friday, I got a call from my insurance company to say that they looked at the car in a little bit more detail, and there's even more structural damage, so it's actually going to be a write-off. And... A month ago, uh, my mom and I shared the same insurance, and they called us because the car that had been smashed was a brand new car. I just bought it two years ago, and it was new at the time. So the insurance policy, if I paid a little bit of extra a month, uh, said that they would replace it with either brand new car, car parts or a brand new car. So I went shopping for a new car yesterday. <laughs> And I haven't decided, I'm between two cars, but they're both safe SUVs. <laughs> so I'm sharing my testimony because we know God is good, but sometimes we need to be reminded just how good he is. Right. And also my hope, because when I went to school and my staff were amazing, the dean of my school, the principal of my school called me hours after it had happened to make sure that I was okay. And um, what I noticed, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but if you get into an accident, I think it's really traumatic. It brings up traumatic memories for other people as well, and they want to talk about their accident. And so you have to be very careful not to be discouraged and to believe in 
what God says, that he is a healer and he will restore you. And you will have no, no you know, uh, long-term consequences to this accident, right? So I was holding on to that. But um, what, what saddened me is that nobody had positive encouragement for me. And I think that through this testimony, we now have that substance yeah. to give other people. Because he can do it. Hallelujah. God works all things together for the good of those that love him, that we are in his perfect will. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You have 10 minutes for me. I, I want to start a new series this morning called uh, entitled Together. And what a great a testimony uh, opening up this uh, new series this morning called uh, Together. And um, Bella and I, um, we've been here at the river for uh, 13 years now, and we're really excited about what God is saying about this new season we're entering in. And we have, n we have never been so committed to this house that we are today. I'm telling you, uh, God is up to something amazing and great, and we are so committed to uh, what God has for all of us here at the river and for this city, for this region. And we know that he has called us here on purpose for a purpose. Amen. And we're not moved by what we see in the physical because I'm not from this world. I am moved by a spiritual world. It's the spiritual that moves me, not the physical. This stuff that we see is only temporary. We're not moved by the physical realm. We're moved by the spiritual realm. What God is saying, His promises that He promised, the things that He's declaring, the stuff that He's leading us into. So we're really excited of, of, for what God is saying about our, this house, our ministry, this city. And um, get ready, church, because the best is we're about to enter into. So open your Bibles in John chapter 17. And uh, this morning on this new series... Uh, uh, together, I want to talk about a little bit this week and next week on the power of together, the importance of the power of togetherness. In the, in the whoever, do, uh, do you have a Bible this morning? Do you have a, a, a digital Bible? Somebody? Okay, cool. Let's open our Bibles in John chapter. Um, John chapter. Did I say seventeen? Yes. John chapter 17, and let's start with verse 20, and I am going to read from the Amplified Classified. I love the Amplified Bible, and since we had um, uh, um, Bobby Connors here last year, he really was telling us to read from the Amplified Classified, and I, being, uh, the Amplified being... Uh, one of my favorite translations, I had to download the classified uh, uh, translation, which I love. And it goes on by saying, verses 20 to 26, Neither for these alone do I pray. It is not for their sake, only that I make this request. But also for all of those who will ever come to believe in, trust in, cling to, rely on, me through their word and teaching, that they all may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Verse 23. In them... I in them, and you in me, in order that they may become one and perfect, perfectly united, that the world may know and definitely recognize that you sent me, and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Verse 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have entrusted to me, as your gift to me, may be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. Your love gift to me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Oh, just and 
O just and righteous Father, although the world has not known you, as it has failed to recognize you, has never acknowledged you, I have known you continually, and these men understand and know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them and revealed your character in your very self. I will continue to make you known that the love which you have bestowed upon me may be in them felt their hearts and that I myself may be in them in verse uh, let's go back to verse uh, uh, um, uh, verse 24 that father I desire that they also whom you have entrusted me as your gift to me may be with me where I am so that they may see my glory which you have given me me as a gift. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, God. We thank you that there is power in unity. There is power in being together. There is power in togetherness, God. There is power in unity, God. And we thank you for this word. Lord, that this word will come and fall deep into our hearts. May we understand that we are stronger together than apart, God. Lord, as we step into a new season, even this into a, a new season in the natural, this fall season, God, may we fall into a place of break through a victory together may we continue to seek your face and see your kingdom be established in this house in this city in this region in this province in our lives as it is in heaven we pray in jesus name in god's people said this morning i want to speak to uh, to you on the power of of together, the importance of being together. And it seems to be, I mean, I'm only 27 forever, but as I get a little older, you know, I know, I know, we all get a little older, you know, every year it's, we're getting older, but it's not old, it's wise. And I choose to be 27 forever. Uh, I, I'm, I have a, a great appreciation uh, for the power of doing things together. I love teamwork and those that work around me know that you know we love teamwork we love to empower people to uh, to step into their destiny and their calling um i am the first one in the in line to say i don't have it all i don't know it all i don't have it all figured out actually i don't know what i'm doing so um if you think by looking at me that you think that oh he must know what he's doing i don't know what i'm doing and one thing is for sure that with God, all things are possible. And with Him, together with Him, we can do all things. We can step into all things. And we can see all things be manifested in our lives according to His perfect will for our lives. So there is power in being together. And God never intended us to, uh, intended us to, to travel this journey we call life alone. You know, He never intended uh, for us to travel this world alone, to journey alone. As a matter of fact, some of the greatest ex expressions of God's love for us are seen in the incredible people He has surrounded us with. Uh, you know, our, 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 our mom and dad, our parents, our brothers, our spouses, our children, friends and, and associated people that come around us. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I married up. My wife is way smarter than me. So if you're looking for smarts, you'll find it in Bella. I'm telling you. She is smart. She is smart. And she's not, where is she? She's somewhere out there. She is smart. She is very smart. But, uh, but God intended, I, I know I, I, I married up. I know that for sure. But um, uh, I, I always tell her, I have the looks. You got the smart. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> she is smart. <laughs> she is very smart. And I, I'm so glad that, you know, we make a great team, and, and God brought us together. I was only 16 when, and when, and when, when we started dating, and I know, it seems a lifetime ago. Rachel, close your ears right now. Rachel is our baby girl in the back. Um, but um, at 16, what did I know? But God brought us together, and I've had this desire to serve God, and she was serving God since she was a baby, and uh, her aunt used to take her to, to, uh, 
to Sunday school and, uh, and, and, and instill in her the principles of, you know, and, and she grew in God and it, in the Word of God. And when, I, when she entered uh, 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 um, English class, that I remember that day I was sitting, uh, second row from the back, and this girl came in. I didn't know who she was. And I'm like, mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date that girl. And then, so I, you know, tried to, the smooth guy that I was, tried to get a, a date with, with her. She says, you want to go out with me? Sure. Come to church. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yep. If you want to go out with me, you've got to go out with Jesus first. Well, three years of dating and 29 years of marriage, here we are. I guess she won. She won. But the importance of being together in, 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 in some of the greatest ex expressions of God's love for us are seen in, in the incredible people that He puts and He has put around us, has surrounded our lives with. So don't take, don't take it for granted when, when God brings people uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, alongside of you. There is a purpose. He wants to express His love through you, through them. Uh, you know, there is power in being together. And the power of together is found whatever healthy relationships exist. Some people just need to cut off some relationships, friendships, because they're toxic. Yeah, and, but but there, is, there is power in, 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 in healthy relationships. There is power in, in, in relationships that are healthy, you know, and we need to, to, to be intentional of, of pouring into those and growing in those. And in, 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 in it is a gift from God when He sees people our way that are willing to help us on the journey because we were never meant to journey alone. I have a shirt, a t-shirt that says, you are not alone. And I take that everywhere I go. I love when I travel to wear that shirt because I take my jacket off and I walk to the, to the airports and, and I see people like, because it's like this scriptive writing. I see people like, or they're really reading it. Because we're never, we were not meant to journey alone. And, and God's power is visible even in our Christian walk when we choose to link arms together. And with this series of message, I want to encourage us in this house and I encourage as we move forward into a new season. This is harvest time, people. Even in the natural, it is harvest time. But in the spiritual, it is harvest time. And we need to understand that we are greater together than apart. I know you're hungry. There's muffins in the foyer in a second. And some coffee. And if you like chips, I'm, low, I'm sure there's... Someone was telling me the other day that they bought... Um, uh, 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 chips with s'mores flavor? Come on, that must be heavenly. I need to find those somewhere. I mean, I'm. And together we're going to eat a bag of chips. There you go. Uh oh. All the healthy people said, Amen. In, in, in this principle of, of, of being together, of journeying together, of, of understanding that we're stronger together than apart because we all have something to contribute. We all have something to bring forth. Last week, I, I drove all the way to Montreal uh, on, on Tuesday. Me, myself, and I, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit in the car. And we had, uh, we had a riot together. I'm telling you. Yeah, all of us, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit and I, we had a riot for six hours driving through, through to Montreal. And we, we gathered with some leaders from across, I gathered with some leaders from across the nation to do some spiritual mapping and, and pray for us strategically, prophetically over some issues in our nation. And, and in the, in the, the leader that came from the States were saying, you know, even the briefing at the end and having lunch with, with the team, at the end, uh, uh, she was saying, um, I travel the world all the time. And I do this kind of stuff, you know, in many nations of the world. And, uh, but there's something special about what's happening here in Canada that I witnessed 
the last couple of days. It is the, 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 the spirit of unity that is, that, that is happening amongst you leaders. How, how there's th that, you know, this, the last two days she was saying that there's no spirit of competition. God it was moving so, so beautifully because uh, there's this spirit of competition and no one was trying to be greater than the other because we understand that, that we all carry something, but everyone is important and we're stronger together than divided and in the church we misunderstand that we, we, we must realize that even in our journey in this house in this ministry in our personal walk we are stronger together than apart everyone has something to offer you know what you carry what I carry what she carries what he carries when we bring all that to the plate uh, there's something beautiful that happens in, in there's there's a, 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 a blessing that flows from that when we come together and this morning I'm just going to give you my introduction because time is running but the, the, the next couple of weeks I really want to nail this thing down the importance and the power of being together You know, some, one of the things that, um, that, that people sometimes say when they walk into a church, I, um, I didn't belong or I felt disconnected or, or I didn't feel that there was a place for me. May this place be a place of connection, a place where everyone that walks through these doors will find a place to belong that no orphans will live in this house. Come on. And from this pulpit, we declare and decree there are no orphans in this house. Everyone belongs. Everyone has a place to grow, to express themselves by the gifts that God has given them. Bam! And all through the Scriptures, through the Bible, story after story, we see the, 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 the principles being recorded in the Bibles, in the Scriptures. And, and there is a, the, a point I would like us to, to understand this morning is God's provision in your life, in almost every sphere, is found in the context of the power of together. God's provision in your life In almost every sphere in, is found in the context of the power of together. There is something that happens when we choose to come together. And in this hour, the enemy is working fiercely around people, trying to bring division, trying to bring the, the, the idea that, oh, you don't need to be there. You don't need to be part of the group. You can have church in your house. You can be there. You can go. There's something that happens when we come together. There's something that happens when we come together. From eternity past, uh, you know, the, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit and God Himself, the, 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 you know, even from the history, Adam and Eve, uh, togetherness has been the organizing principle of a full and fulfilling life. Uh, it is in God's heart uh, and it has always been and will always be Together, there's something that happens when we come together. There's something that happens when we choose to be together. And I suggest to you this morning that there is not much the devil fears more than Christians standing together in unity. There is not much the devil fears than knowing that the river people That those that meet together in this house, that call this house home, when they come together, when they have each other's backs, he fears that. There's no place he can come in and bring division because we stand together knowing that we're protecting each other, knowing that no one is greater than no one. Together, we advance the kingdom of God in this place. And together, we're going to have each other's backs. And when we choose to do that, see, I'm not called to like you. You're not called to like me. You might not like my hair. I, did you, did I change my hair too? Do I look younger? Thanks. Some people say, what's going on? Your hair now is sticking up. Looks like you put your hands in the socket and you're like, ah! Oh, Pastor, why don't you wear a tie? 
Why doesn't your wife color her hair brown? Why don't you do this? Why don't you wear different pants? Why don't you do... Why, where's your Sunday jacket? We're not called to like each other. We're called to love one another. I might not like your hair. I might not like your jacket. I might not like your dress. I might not like your glasses. I might not like you. But I'm called to love you. Go beyond the stuff. Love moved God because God loved the world. Because God loved you. Because God loved me. Because He loved us. He gave. Love moved Him. Because Jesus loved us unconditionally, He gave His life. So we're not called to like each other. Because sometimes that's where the division comes. Well, I didn't like her attitude. And I don't like her dress. And I don't like her hair. And I don't like her, the color of her eyebrow. I don't know. I don't like, the, I don't like her shoes. And I don't like... Well, you're not, you're not called to like, honey. You're called to love. Love. Love is the foundation of all things. And when we choose to love, when we choose to come and unite ourselves together, the devil will not have any place, any, any crack to come through because we are going to be a force that is going to push every darkness away because he knows that if we discover the power of together, there's nothing we cannot do. At the end of this, of this series, I want us to link arms and really pray together. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to have communion together. We're going to finish this series in a couple of weeks. And we're just going to believe as we enter into a new season of harvest. We're gonna want, we are rededicating our lives. And we're going to go together. And we're going to conquer this thing. And we're going to step into the place where He's calling us to. As a body, as a church, as, a, as children of God in this hour. And when one, when one is weak, all the body will feel and we'll pull them up. When one is rejoicing, we're going to rejoice. And together we're going to accomplish the things that He has for us. Turn to somebody and say, it is a good day. Turn to the other person and say, it's not. Turn to the other person and say, it's not. It's a God day. Ah, it's a God day. He knows, the enemy knows when we're together, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Which is why the greatest pain the devil can bring into your life is to bring the pain of separation instead of power together. He knows when he brings the vision, he's got the body. The power of togetherness. The power of understanding. Greater power of God's, uh, of understanding that there is power in unity when we choose to move together. When we understand that we've been called. All called. We all have something to bring. We all have something to offer. The little that I have. The great that I have. The, the, the much that I have. Everything that I have, I bring to the forefront. I bring to the forefront because what I have counts what you carry counts is later than the pinky no the lord the lord healed some toes last week didn't he and we said well, it's just a toe but when the toe is hurting the whole body feels it We need the toe as much as we need the elbow, as much as we hand, as much as we need the neck. We need all parts working together for the good to advance the kingdom of God. We all have something to offer. We all have something to bring. We all been called for such a time as this. No one is greater than no one. The power of He. And as we uh, move this forward this in the next couple of weeks as we journey on this on this series of together we're going to understand that we have something that God has called us for something greater than our personal uh, kingdoms there's something greater that we've been called to there's something that God is calling us into and the kingdom of God is going to be manifested through all of us not just some of us Woo! say with me it's a good day Say with me, no, 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 no. It's a God day. 
It's a God day. Let's stand together this morning. Father, we thank you. Call the worship team up as we finish this morning. But I want us to understand the importance of understanding that we must journey together, that we're stronger together than apart, that there is power in unity. When you feel alone, don't give room to the enemy. Just cast him out. Just break those, those, those thoughts and understand that if God is for you, who can be against you? You and God, you're the majority. God is for you. There's a people that stand with you. There's a group of people that believe in you. There's a group of people that are cheering you on. You are not own. God is with you. There's a church family that loves you. And there's a place for you to belong in this house. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for the power of togetherness. We thank you for the power of unity. We thank you that together we can accomplish all things, God. We thank you that even now, Lord, you are working all things together for our good, Lord. We thank you, just like John says, that in, in, your, in, in your word, Lord, that we may be one like you are one, God. world will know when we come together in unity, Lord, that the world will look at us and know that you are God. Because we choose to love. Because we choose to honor. Because we choose to journey together in this life, God. So we ask you right now, Spirit, come. Come and have your way. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your power. And as we journey the next few weeks on this topic, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and have your way, God. Have your way in us and through us. Even when we go from this place, that may, may we recognize and understand that we do not journey alone. That you, are, you go with us. When we're faced with tomorrow, when we're our work tomorrow, when we're faced with situations, we thank you that your presence goes with us. Just like we heard from Ali this morning, even when sometimes things, there's bumps on the road and sometimes we're faced with stuff, we are not alone. Your favor, your presence is there making a way all things together for our good. And we thank you that you're putting people in our lives. You're adding people to our lives to accomplish. To accomplish the desires and in, in the dream that you have for us, God. So we thank you for your faithfulness this morning. Spirit of God, we give you permission to have your way in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to finish off this morning in worship. Bell and I will be in the foyer. We want to see you. Be blessed. Be a blessing. And don't forget, you're not alone. God is with you. He loves you conditionally. Thank you, Jesus.